Good morning. Welcome to worship here in the beautiful sanctuary of First Presbyterian Church of Easton. I am Pastor Stephanie, and I welcome you today on this snowy day. How many people had snow on their cars this morning? We, um, we've shifted into the season, so um, I hope you feel the warmth here, even as it's cold outside. Um, I have a few announcements to make. Excuse me. Friends, in this season of Advent, we are striving to continue to keep connected. So if you have not yet, please know that every member of the congregation is um, invited to join the CARE clusters. It's a simple little mechanism for us to keep in touch. It's groups of six people. Um, one of those six people is a deacon. And we'll just put you into a random little group. And then the idea is that for six months, once a month, each one of those people will call the other five people just to say hello, just to see how they're doing. And the deacons um, in that group will kick them off in December. So just for six months, you get a call from somebody, and one of those months you call others. So please consider being in a care cluster. Um, again, it's our, our hope to just connect our congregation um, in these strange times. Where I am continuing with our midweek meditation uh, from 11 to 11.30 on Wednesdays here in our beautiful sanctuary. It is a quiet, reflective time. If you um, are not working or have other obligations during that time, you are welcome to join us. I also try to stream that live, if that's helpful. Um, this week, I know it's not in your announcements, but this week we also have our brown bag lunch at noon. Um, those have been really enjoyable conversations, so if you have time and um, want to come and join us, um, Sometimes uh, I have forgotten my lunch, so I just run around the corner to the hot dog place, and that works really well. So please know that that's an option, too. Friends, choir is continuing um, on Wednesdays. Uh, chancel choir from 5.15 to 6.15, and our handbells from 6.30 to 7.15. I believe there's still a spot in handbells, so if that's something you've always wanted to do, please know there's still room for you. Those ringers are needed. Um, and you can always reach out to Gloria if you have questions about what that's like. So, um, you are welcome. We are moving into the season of Advent. There's just little touches of it now in the space. But we hope to transform the space even more um, on Saturday, December 4th, in the morning from 9.30. And we'll go to around noon. Depends on how many hands we have Many hands will make the work go quickly. Um, we'll add um, our greens to this space and even a little bit outdoors. So please join us. Um, we promise to put on some festive music and make that time pleasant. Um, this is the first Sunday of Advent, and next Sunday we are having our uh, special Advent experience if you are somebody, young or old, who likes to um, experience, to do hands-on, um, we're going to begin together at 9.30. We have uh, crafts for both adults and children. Um, and most importantly, uh, you can come and make an Advent wreath. Uh, it is a way for you to bring Advent into your home, uh, so please... Uh, Reserve an Advent wreath uh, for your household um, or just come that morning and it is going to be a wonderful participatory faith formation event. Our pre-time will have some goodies um, and then we'll flow into worship and worship will, will also be um, more participatory. So come for a really interesting and hopefully meaningful uh, Sunday morning. Please join us. Oh, yes, our, um, we are busy, friends. Um, 
our deacons are inviting us to um, adopt, to uh, be a, a, an angel for a family um, at Third Street Alliance. You'll probably see a tree go up, but in the meantime, Third Street Alliance has um, an Amazon wish list, and you can purchase gift cards, um, and there's some information in your bulletin, and we will make sure that the families, the mothers and children who are in that shelter have a little Christmas cheer from us. So please know uh, that that is an opportunity for that angel tree from the deacons. We also have safe harbor dinners that are coming up. Um, we've already filled through December, so if you can consider doing a meal in January, February, or March, there are sign-up sheets in the back of the narthex, and we've adjusted the sheets a little bit. Um, the intention is not for one person to do the meal by themselves, so there are different slots to sign up for. Um, you can do that with friends, family, if you're on a team, you can do it with church team members, um, but please know that that helps our friends at Safe Harbor um, and is part of our mission to feed the hungry. The Blessing Box, likewise, um, is about to be restocked. It is well used, friends, um, and again, there are also sign-up sheets in the narthex. If you are somebody online, um, you can always call the church office to sign up for any of those mission pro projects. Today we are having coffee hour. If you'd like to stay after worship, we can go downstairs um, and have some coffee and some goodies. If you would like to host coffee hour, uh, the sign-up sheets are in the narthex. If you would like to... Um, oh. Oh, Pat brought the sign-up sheets downstairs, so if you'd like to sign up, the, the sign-up sheets are downstairs. Um, and there are also sign-up sheets if you would like to um, have some flowers on our table. You're also welcome to do this. We have copies of our 2020 financial review for anyone interested. Um, they can be emailed to you or contact our church office to give you a copy. We want um, to continue to be transparent about our financial situation. And friends, I believe those are all my announcements for this morning. Have I missed anything? Poinsettias. Poinsettias, thank you. And I even have it here to remind me. Um, it is, again, the season of poinsettias, so if you would like um, to fill out the sheet uh, to have poinsettias here, uh, we will have them in the sanctuary. Um, and if you can fill out the form and in, turn it into the office by December 19th, we'll have our beautiful display here in the sanctuary, um, and you are welcome to take your poinsettias home with you, um, or we will find a home for them um, as well. So those sheets are in the rear of the sanctuary, and there might be, there might be one up front too. And there are also care cluster sheets up front. Now did I get everything? It is such a joy that even during these strange times that this church continues to be so giving to one another and to our community. So I thank you um, for all the hands that make this ministry and mission possible. With all of that said, friends, I invite us now to turn our hearts to worship. Will you join your voices with mine as we are called to worshiping our God? Watch and wait, for Christ is coming. Let us light candles of hope, peace, joy, and love. The simple beauty of these candles reminds us of the hope we have in Christ. We watch and wait for Christ's coming, and we rejoice.
Let us pray. Faithful God, renew us in hope that we may be alert to the growing of Christ's light among us. God of promise, God of hope, into our darkness come. morning. We prepare to hear God's word. God of light and love, our prayers, praise and praise, prayers overflow with hope as the season of Advent opens. You come to your people to dwell with us. You come with power, not to dominate, but to transform. You come with promises, not to give us what we want, but to make all things new. You come with truth, shattering lies and setting your people free. You come with signs of your deep love for the world. Your coming is our hope. And so we offer you our worship in gratitude and anticipation. Come into our lives again, O God, and show us how to hope in the face of all that is discouraging. For we gather in the name of hope made flesh, Jesus Christ, your promise and our desire.
before God, trusting in God's mercy and grace, and we lift our prayer, seeking God's compassionate forgiveness. Will you join your voices with mine as we pray to our loving God? Surprising God, forgive our sleepiness in the presence of your splendor. Forgive us if we yawn when you present us with life-changing possibilities. Forgive us for abandoning hope so quickly and expecting the same old thing in the same old way. Forgive us for underestimating your power to do a new thing. Awaken us to your holy, hopeful presence. Awaken us so we may watch and wait for you, Lord Jesus Christ. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Amen. Friends, we've already heard the joyful noise reminding us of God's love and grace. Friends, the one who comes with justice also comes with mercy. The God of judgment is truly the Christ of compassion. God offers you forgiveness today, and in hope, receive it gladly. Let us sing. From the prophet Isaiah, we read his 33rd book, 14 to 16. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will call a righteous branch to spring up from, for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and redeemer. Amen. We've entered into the season, the time of year when we begin to get ready for Christmas. Yes. With the rest of the world, we are starting to get excited. How are you feeling about singing Christmas hymns? I know it's controversial to do this in Advent, but as we talked about it as a worship team and a session, we thought that this was a time of year, this particular year, when maybe we needed to sing a little bit more. 
We are getting ready. We're starting to decorate. I think we have two wreaths out on the door. More will go up on Saturday. How are your neighborhoods? Are they transforming? It was amazing the past few days to see houses, which just two weeks ago had ghosts and goblins and witches on their, on their front lawns. And now suddenly they have Santas and Rudolphs and the vibe has totally changed. Friends, even as we add decor to our worship space and building, as Christians, this is a season that we do more than decorate. We prepare for an important day. We ready our hearts and our minds and our spirits for the coming of Christ. We remember that over 2,000 years ago, that God stepped into human existence in a way that God had never done it before. We know that long, long ago, God created life. God gave we, humankind, humanity, all that we needed. God offered us choices. And human beings, we ignored God's guidance and overstepped boundaries which were given to keep us healthy and whole, and we made choices. Some were good, many were greedy. Some were life-affirming, some were damaging, unjust, violent, prideful. And so God spoke to us, and we thought we knew better. God gave us rules to live by, and we broke commandments. God sent us prophets like Jeremiah, who we hear from today, poets and priests to point to the goodness of God. But we developed habits and patterns of human thinking and human ways of doing, behaving in the world that turned us away from the grace of God. Not always, but pretty consistently. Friends, God has never given up on us. Who could show us a way better than a flesh and blood human being? And so God came into this world as a child. And as we hear LJ and Dahlia, we're reminded that that, that small voice is the voice of God among us. A human baby was born to show us the way back to goodness and life. It's such an incredible and almost incomprehensible idea. First, that we believe in God. More and more of our neighbors aren't even in that place. But we Christians, we add this extra layer of belief. We claim that God loves us and that God came to be with us to show us the depth of love. So we proclaim not only that God is, but that God was born and is with us still. We proclaim God loves the world and became a human being. Jesus, the Christ child, that is what we get ready for at Christmas season. Every year we take time to remind ourselves the lengths that God would go to to show us love. So we prepare. And it's gotten complicated. There's a great deal of hype around Christmas. Santa comes now, right? Not just Jesus. Santa comes with Rudolph and Frosty. And now there's even an elf on a shelf. Anybody's family do that? I miss that tradition a little bit. My kids were a little bit too old for that. We look forward to hearing our fav favorite Christmas carols. Again, there's not, every, not every church likes to sing the Christmas carols during Advent. And I don't know about you, but sometimes when I'm in the grocery store and I hear a hymn or a carol that I love, and it's by an artist that I don't love so much, it's a little cringy. We have office parties. Some may be on Zoom again this year. 
there's a tradition of ugly sweaters now? Maybe we'll gather in small numbers still. Maybe we'll look forward to seeing family and friends. All the preparations that need to be done, my friends. Friends, even if you put up a Christmas tree last week, I won't scold you. For people of the Christian faith, though, who embrace the miracle of God being born in flesh and blood, our preparation is meant to be internal. And this Sunday, you are invited to embrace the hope which Emmanuel, God with us, offers the world. You are invited to deepen your sense of hope as part of the preparation for the coming of Christ. So friends, in our scripture today, we heard from the prophet Jeremiah speaking to a community that had been completely devastated by the Babylonian invasion of 587 BCE. We are people who know something about having our world turned upside down, and that is what happened to the nation of Israel. It was scattered, some of its people living in Babylonian captivity. Those exiles, they were taken away from everything that they knew. Their sense of security was completely upended. Their patterns of normal life completely disrupted. Can you resonate with how those people must have felt? The people who were left at home, they had their loved ones and their leaders taken away. Everyone's sense of home and normalcy was shifted. And to those people came the voice of Jeremiah. Jeremiah offered a vision of the future, a vision of hope. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise that I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. And in those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. It was the good news that the people longed to hear. In the face of devastation, With all evidence to the contrary, Jeremiah insists that God will be faithful. God will keep God's promises. God will raise up a new leader in the lineage of the king of David. Jeremiah offers hope. And this hope has a name. It is called, The Lord is Our Righteousness. See, the hope that Jeremiah offers is centered in the faithfulness of God. Hope is a gift that we receive from God. Have you ever thought about what the opposite of hope is? Is it pessimism? Is it despair? Is it dread? I think what's what's important to note is that hope is an active anticipation. It's a proactive longing. Hope doesn't sit still. Hope is that sense in us, in our minds, in our hearts, in our spirits that direct us to trust in the goodness of God. Even when there is evidence to the contrary, Hope reminds us that we can trust that God wants good for us. And hope fills us with expectation at this time of year. This is a good year to be filled with hope. Hope is more than empty optimism. It's more than just Pollyanna positivity. It doesn't mean putting on a smile even when you feel awful. No, hope is not naive. At this time of year, we who claim Christ's hope and remember the incarnation of God's faithfulness and love, we don't pretend that the world is perfect. 
We don't pretend that every hardship and hurt has disappeared. Hope fuels us, fuels us to face those hardships. It fuels us to feed our hungry neighbors as we wait for the gift of the Christ child. Hope empowers us to reach out to someone who might be isolated, alone, or grieving. Hope is what allowed us to gather with Jim as we celebrated Lavona Bats and her life and how much her family will miss her because of the hope that we have in Christ. Hope empowers us, friends, as we await the presence of Emmanuel, God, with us. We celebrate that God is with us now. Hope inspires us and challenges us to work for justice and peace when the world is violent and division is so prevalent. As we remember God born to set us free from all that binds us in the darkness, hope turns us towards the light. Friends, hope is a powerful force. It's a muscle and I want us to exercise it. I want you, I want me to exercise it this season. So friends, I have three invitations to you to build hope. Build hope this season by connecting with others. Even as we continue to live in the world of the coronavirus, and we need our booster shots, and we need to be careful about new variants, and we need to stay safe, but we must stay connected. I welcome anyone to reach out to me if you just need some extra prayer. Join me for lunch on the first Wednesday of the month. Join the care clusters. Find ways to stay connected with each other. Because hope in Christ is fostered and flamed when we come together in community. Friends, this season, boost the hope in your hearts by doing concrete acts of service. You're already doing it. Keep doing it. Even as the weather turns dark and cold, help us to kill, keep that blessing box filled. Work with the deacons as we collect gifts for Third Street Alliance. Take every step you can this season to share the love that you have with others. Because as we embrace our neighbor in need, we embrace hope. Finally, friends, find ways every day to weave reminders of hope into your life. We have devotional booklets for anyone who wants to begin a habit of reading a short devotion each morning. We light candles in worship. You can light candles at home. Come next Sunday and create an Advent wreath so that you can have a candle in your home. Find small ways. A post-it note on your mirror when you brush your teeth. A song that you play in the morning. Find ways every day to remind yourself that we are in the season of waiting and hoping. Now maybe, maybe your reservoir of hope is particularly low. Maybe you don't want to hear that you have to do one more thing right now. Maybe you're not in the Christmas spirit yet. Maybe you are. Maybe it's hard to come to worship and wear a mask. Maybe signing up to be in the care cluster feels like too much. Maybe even words of a prophet from thousands of years ago doesn't spark hope in your hearts. It's okay. For those of you whose hope is nearly gone, hear this. 
Christ was born and lived and died for you. And nothing will change that. The gift of Christmas was and is and will be given to you. You need nothing. You need do nothing to receive that. We can prepare and we should prepare, but Christmas will come. So I couldn't help, as I thought about Christmas coming, to think of a children's story. And I wonder if, Dahlia, you know it, you know? Do you know the Christmas story of Dr. Seuss and the Grinch who stole Christmas? Do you? Do you, Caitlin? That's good. How many grown-ups know that story? Dr. Seuss wrote this children's story about a creature, the Grinch, who tried to stop Christmas by taking all the external stuff of Christmas away from the people of Whoville. The Grinch tried to steal Christmas. Do you remember the ending of the story? Caitlin does. All the Who's were still a snooze when the Grinch packed up his sled. He packed it up with their presents, their ribbons, their wrappings, their tags, their tinsel, their trimmings, their trappings. They're finding out now that no Christmas is coming. They're just waking up, the Grinch said, and I know what they'll do. Their mouths will hang open a minute or two, and then those who's down in Whoville will cry boo-hoo. That's a noise, the Grinch said, that I simply must hear. And so he paused, and the Grinch put his hand to his ear. And he did hear a sound rising over the snow. It started in low, and then it started to grow. But the sound was not sad. Why, the sound sounded merry. It couldn't be so, but it was. It was merry, very. Every who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, was singing. Without any presence at all. The Grinch hadn't stopped Christmas from coming. How could it be so? It came without ribbons, it came without tags, it came without pocket packages, boxes, or bags. And he puzzled for three hours till his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something that he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. Friends, we are preparing we're preparing not by going to store, getting our packages. We don't even need a Christmas tree. We don't need to buy one present, but we can sing. We can sing our joy and our thanksgiving that Christ the child is coming. Christmas will come to you, to me, to all of us this year. It will come. The love of God in Christ is given to you. May that knowledge alone offer you hope this season. Thanks be to God.
We make our offering today with hopeful hearts, trusting that the Holy One who comes to us will bless us with gifts and our lives to make us signs of hope in the world for God's love. Please leave your offering in the plate in the back of the sanctuary or make your gifts online or through the mail. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, we offer our gifts with humble hearts, knowing the need in our world is great, and our gifts alone will never fit that need. We offer our gifts in hope that you will bless them and use them to help fulfill your purpose revealed in Jesus Christ, Savior of all. Amen. Will you join your hearts with mine in prayer, responding with the words, hear our prayer. Let us pray together. O spirit of hope, when the world is confusing and bleak, you pierce the despair with your word and renew our vision of God's possibilities for our lives. Thank you for lessons learned for changes of heart, for new discoveries made and hope restored, even as this pandemic stretches on. 
And as the world around us prepares for the long, cold sleep of winter, we pray for those who feel the burden of loneliness and isolation. We remember those without homes to shelter in and those forced to leave their homes through conflict and natural disaster or political upheaval. Spirit of hope, shelter all these under your wings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of peace, there is strife and disagreement all around us these days. Sometimes in our own lives and relationships and in many nations and neighborhoods in the news. We pray for places where violence and cruelty appear to win the day thinking of situations globally and closer to home. God of peace, work for just and peaceful resolutions to prevail. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh, creator of joy, we give you thanks for moments of joy and celebration in our lives, for pleasure given and received, for quiet times of reflection and conversation, and for the many ways that allow us to keep in contact with those we love. As the days grow colder, we remember those who feel bitter while others rejoice, those who grieve the loss of loved ones, and those who face a bleak winter for any reason. Creator of joy, bring them light and warmth in the season ahead, and let your joy shine through us as compassionate companions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O love divine, made flesh in Christ, you call us into communion with you and community with one another. We pray for your church and our congregation, that love will guide all your people as we plan for our life and our mission. We remember before you our families, whether they are close or estranged for our friends, whether nearby or far. Love divine, bless each one with your love and help us express gratitude and concern for each other in word and action. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy One, we sum up all our prayers, spoken and unspoken, in the words that Jesus taught us as we say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now, brothers and sisters, siblings in Christ, be people of hope. Let hope live in your heart. Look for signs of hope every day in the most humble and common of things. Share the hope of Christ with all you meet. And may the hope of Christ fill you and lift you this day. Amen. Alleluia. <laughs>